My name's Jess Hill and I'm an investigative journalist and now an author, would you believe? And I wrote a book last year called See What You Made Me Do about domestic abuse in Australia. I'm going to be on this panel with Sanam Ma, who's a Pakistani journalist, and she's written about um, the killing of a pretty high profile Pakistani woman um, a few years ago. And we're going to be talking about abusive cultures. To frequently we're talking about um, cultural differences in one area and then the rest, you know, in another when it comes to violence against women. And so I think it was really a good idea to bring those together for All About Women. This talk by Kerry Carrington, I actually watched it several times when I was writing my book. We're filming this um, at a time when basically the country is still reeling from the murder of Hannah Clark and her children in Brisbane. And I think people are seesawing between how could that happen? How could somebody do that to their family like that? Um, to how can we stop this from happening? Why does it keep happening? And when I was writing the book on domestic abuse, it was that was just in my head all the time. How is it happening? Why is it happening? How can we stop it? And when I found um, Professor Carrington's writings on women's police stations, um, it was just like, of course, why, uh, why is this not much more of a mainstream idea? So what she talks about in the talk is she makes it clear just how massive a problem is domestic abuse is that accounts for family violence broadly accounts for almost half of our homicides and then half again is intimate partner violence. And the fact that it actually is a very similar pattern. And the worst thing is that a lot of these women before they are killed fear they will be killed and they know who is most likely to kill them. And yet we leave them in that state to find their own safety, um, to work with police who have limited powers, even if they are enthusiastic and too often they're not enthusiastic about keeping women and children safe. Um, and then it's like we just wait around for the inevitable to happen. These women's police stations, what they do is it's, it's police stations almost entirely staffed by women. They've been around in South America since the 80s. They're in um, Southern India, they're in Africa, they're all over the world. What the women's police stations do is they take the woman where she is at that time and they listen to her and then they act on what that woman needs to happen. So it might be, I just want you to go around and talk to him, or I need you to go and remove him from the house, or I want you to arrest him because this is what he has done. And what that means is that women who are at a much earlier stage in their reckoning with what's happening to them can come to the police and just talk without feeling like, oh, now this is going to become a prosecution or now I'm going to have to go to court. So what they're finding is that young women, especially the domestic homicide rate in Southern American countries is dropping. You know, and Kerry Carrington's work, what she's trying to do in doing, she just did a whole research study in Argentina. And what she's trying to do is bring these, this proof back to Australia to say, we've got a major problem. Majority of sworn officers in Australia are men, like 85%. Women don't want to disclose to men. There's a misogynistic culture in policing that is incredibly hard to shift. Why don't we just trial police stations for women. That's what she's trying to do. And this talk I think is just brilliant because it just, it gets to the heart of how do we interrupt this before the assaults and everything starts to happen. My name's Kerry Carrington and thank you Julia for that very generous introduction. I'm going to be talking to you today about women and violence. Half, nearly almost half of our homicides are due to family and domestic violence. Of those, a quarter are due to partner killings. Domestic violence actually fits a pattern and this has to change. And what is even more remarkable is that we know about these patterns. Three quarters of women know their killers. They know their attackers and most of them would know in advance it is preventable, and yet we are pretty hopeless at preventing it. Those homicide rates have not shifted for almost two decades. All of our intervention measures, nearly all of them, are post-assault. That is after the fact, 
not before the fact. And they're important. They're very important to reduce the trauma. They're very important to help the victims escape. It's very important. And a lot of them are about making perpetrators accountable. But we kind of seem to have, I think, the balance wrong. Far too much emphasis on that and far too little emphasis on what's what we call preventative um, responses, and I think this really needs to change. Women who do not have the resources to leave a, an abusive, violent relationship, on average, put up with the violence, guess what, over 30 times before they do anything about it. Women who have resources and financial means and independence to escape a violent relationship put up with it on average three times. So who do you think has the greatest risk of being um, the, the, the subject of lethal violence. Of course, it's, so it's marginalised women, it's Indigenous women, it's women who are poor, women who have other issues. Uh, so many women find going to police stations to report a very hostile experience. So, how might it change? Well, I had a wonderful experience last year where I, I um, went to Latin America and I, I, got, I had to get permission from the Minister of Security to visit women on the police stations. Um, Today, in just the capital city alone, they have 95 uh, police stations for women, um, and they're planning to establish another 40 by 2017. Um, and they're very bright, and the interview rooms are very welcoming, and they have flowers and paintings. There's always a woman at reception. Uh, they do not look like police stations. They do not feel like police stations. They, uh, they do work in hand with the local police, so if they have to make an arrest, they will hand that over to the local police. And what they found was that they enhanced women's access to justice. They massively increased their experience of the justice system. They certainly increased conviction rates. It's really cost effective. It's really on the front line. And it's really solving that structural issue that women do not want to go to male police and disclose. They do not. It really is solving that problem, what we have.